<laughs> Hello, freak bitches. Okay, that's a good question. Yeah. Who would you rather be around? The couple that's stabbing at each other or the ideal couple who's making you feel like your relationship isn't so great? Oh, the ideal couple, for sure. I want to be around happy people. Yeah. I want to be around, be around people that are enjoying each other's company. There's nothing more frustrating than being around two people that insult each other, like, slyly in public. Ooh, it's brutal. We know Phil, a couple of those. Phil Hartman's wife used to do that all the time. Really? Yeah. They say you shouldn't speak ill of the dead, but when they kill your friend and then kill themselves, I think you're allowed to talk shit. Absolutely. There's no um, reverence in death for the they bad They had ones. a very uh, combative relationship, but she used to talk shit about him in front of us. Really? Yeah, right in front of him and us. It was just like... She would say he's old, and she would, you know, t like one time she was talking about her car. They were talking, Phil was talking about a car, like Phil was a car aficionado, loved yeah. cars. So we were talking about a car, I forget what it was, and then she goes, I love pickup trucks. I want to get a pickup truck. All my boyfriends back home had pickup trucks. <laughs> and you're just picturing her getting stuffed in the back of this pickup <laughs> truck by some fucking farmer boy, <laughs> some dude with thick wrists and... Big yeah. old catcher's mid hands, just, <laughs> yeah, just laying his fat dick. Doesn't to her. even take his pants off. But, the, the, <laughs> but saying that, like, I don't know. It's terrible. It's just weird. It was. And weird. was it constantly like that? She was always belittling him. Always, always tearing him down. They would have these horrible fights, man. I never understand that. It's like you're together. Like it's for the good. Like his success is your success, and yet they'll still tear them down. Well, people don't think logically. Yeah, I know what you're saying, but that's not a logical thought. Yeah, I mean the. I think they just didn't get along great, you know, for yeah. whatever reason. Phil was really fucking smart, too. He was the coolest. He was a really smart You're guy. You're so lucky you got to know him. Yeah, he was, um, like, I mean, he would do things like he learned how to be a pilot. Yeah. So he would be on the set, and during the downtime, he'd be reading aviation books. Jeez. He would just sit in there reading them, going through them. He was the most studious guy, and the most disciplined with his notes. He would have his uh, script, and each one of his scenes that he was in would have a certain highlight, like a, like a tab, uh -huh. like a green tab or whatever the color tab was. And then all of his scenes would be highlighted. He'd have notes beside them, wow. specific parts of the scene where he wanted to do something different, or, or he questioned his intent, or like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go in, and he would just every time he would nail it. Every time he would nail it. I mean, it was the incredibly Amazing. rare time where he would crack up during a, a yeah. filming. Yeah. But, you know, just having fun. I mean, yeah. It was never like he fucked up. But he never fucked up, right? I mean, everybody fucks up and laughs when you're not supposed to laugh because it's funny. But he right? was on his game. He was so professional, but he was like a very. Very, very intelligent man. Like, well, he was he an artist it. too, right? Yes. Didn't he start out like designing? Like, he designed album, album covers? covers for bands. Yeah, yeah. Before he was ever uh, even on SNL. He was also one of the writers for Pee Wee's Playhouse. Right. Yeah. I mean, he was on Pee Wee's. Yeah, Playhouse. he was on Pee Wee's Playhouse, and I think he wrote the first movie. Was I think he wrote Pee Wee's Big Adventure. as one of the writers. Really? Yeah. What a great! That's amazing. So you got to hang with him a lot. You guys yeah. would hang all the time. He took me up in his plane. He did. Yeah, it was crazy. So I was, I was going to buy a house, uh -huh. and um, he was suggesting all these different areas, and I, you know, he said, "What do you like?" I said, "I just like quiet. I like peace. I like to see things that are pretty. I like yeah. nature." And he's like, "Okay, because I I think there's an area like right around like Thousand Oaks area. I want you to check this out." Right. So he take me up in his plane, and, wow, <laughs> flying around and looking at all these. Wow. It was crazy. Instead of driving on the 101 to go look. <laughs> But he had like a small plane, and That's what great. freedom you have when you have a plane, man! Do you ever want to do that? Fly yourself? Yeah, but it's a weird way to go when you know this fucking plane's dying on you. I've had cars die on me. Yeah, you know. I know the mechanical end of it. Are Yikes! you mechanical? Are you like? Um, not really. Yeah. I mean, I know certain things, but it's right. it's like someone saying, "Yeah, I took karate when I was 14." Right. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. I ran my own stereo in my Toyota Corolla. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> right. But I wouldn't tell you that I can install stereos. Yeah. Yeah. I know a little bit about cars. That's but the I, thing. I love them. Yeah, I do too. But that's the thing. It's like uh, I feel like if you're gonna have your own plane, and you got to be gotta know really something. knowledgeable and be on top of it, and yeah. you got to know your limits. And that's kind of my limit. Yeah, it was intense, man. The, the landing was intense. Because yeah. it was a little tiny plane, man. It was a little two-seater plane. So it was just me and Phil, and uh, we're coming in for this <laughs> landing. I'm like, Jesus, it's right there. Like, the ground's right, <laughs> right. there. It's, like, it's crazy. <laughs> it's weird. It's and like it's, a, the small plane. And yeah, knowing know? that it's like your goofy friend from the set mm -hmm. is <laughs> yeah. taking you in. Well, he was always um, like an older brother to me was on he? the set. Yeah, because he was, he was older than me. How much older more was experienced. he? More like At least 15? 16 years older, maybe more, mm -hmm. maybe 17, 
18 years old or something yeah. like that. And he was a star already, right? Yes. When you, yeah. He was a star. Yeah. Like when, he was when so great. we were on the set, he is in movies all the time. You know, he was just getting off of Saturday Night Live. Right. And, uh, you know, and then, of course, Dave Foley was a big star from Kids in the Hall. Yeah. And he was a big alternative star, too. Like, everybody loved him and because he was so smart and the yeah. writing was so good. And then Andy Dick was like a known weirdo. Yeah. And then, so it was, it was a fascinating was little a group great of crew. Yeah. Great crew. I remember spending a whole summer just watching Phil's Best of SNL disc. Oh. The funny and stuff that wasn't even a hit. Like him playing the acting teacher. <laughs> oh, I mean, I would watch yeah. it in a loop. I could yeah. not stop watching it. He was so, this is something. This is nothing. This is something. This is nothing. And then he would like, shit on somebody. <laughs> like, sir, can I get out of my class? <laughs> it just, he was on the money 100% of the time. Yeah, man. He uh, oh, would God, do stand up to for the audience for fun. Oh yeah, he would like warm up the crowd. Oh really? You know, he was like putting together almost like a little routine that he would do. Wow. And we talked about it. He's like, oh, I think I'm gonna go on stage someday. Wow. He just never. I don't think he ever really did it though. But he could have easily done it. And his know? wife just God damn. Well, hey man, she was troubled. You know, she was a troubled person, and she was also on Zoloft and cocaine. Oh my God. Which apparently leads to psychotic thoughts. And uh, uh, it's apparently a, a very bad combination, especially for some people. With yeah. Your, and people have their own particular sort of human neurochemistry they got going on up there. And with some people, when they do Coke and uh, Zoloft together, it just makes them insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, the, it's horrible. The real, one of the real losses as a fan of his is that he was the kind of guy that the older he got, the better he would become. Like, oh, yeah. He was playing guys who were older than him. He had that very fatherly intelligent older kind of vibe anyway yeah so as as a 75 80 year old he would still be killing it yeah i think um i think there's a million different kinds of tragedies but the big one is that his kids had to deal with the fact yeah. that their mom killed them and then killed herself how and many two two Wait. kids and then they went and lived with family afterwards just Wait. the whole thing's so dark it's so sad it is man it is the worst <laughs>